everyone and welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Ali Korm and Ed Carson here with a breakdown of the action in today's session and this week since it is a shortened holiday week. And it was not a very good tape, Ed, here with the NASDAQ undercutting key support this week. No, it was not. Uh, it was the NASDAQ and the major indexes all struggled, but especially tax. Definitely a tough time out there. Uh, we're going to take a look at a few stocks and sectors that are doing reasonably well, Expedia, Genera Energy, and Checkpoint Software. All right, let's do that. But first, let's analyze the market action. So the NASDAQ today down about 2.1%, the hardest hit by far. And the S&P 500 down 1.2%. The Dow down about 3 tenths of a percent. The Russell 2000 down some 9 tenths of a percent. So we uh, started off the week with a gap down below the 50-day line. And it didn't get better from there, Ed. No, I mean, it's sort of there was a lot of big intraday moves up and down, mostly down, and we ended near the weekly lows. Uh, you know, the NASDAQ has given up most of the gains or over half of the gains from that March 14th low. Sort of ran up a nice, that was a lot of fun. There was concern that this might be a bear market rally, a short covering rally. You know, it's increasingly looking that way for tech stocks, at least, um, especially with Treasury yields. But the other major indexes don't look particularly strong either, but this one looks the, looks really weak. That's right. So here we have the S&P 500 with support at the 50-day line in question here uh, with the index right around the 4,400 level, closing below it today, though. We also have the Dow here uh, reversing lower today. So briefly got above its 200-day, uh, now sliding below that looks like for now it is above its 50-day line, and then we can also uh, take a look at the Russell 2000 here. So now um, some resistance at that flatlining 50-day, Ed. And I do also want to take a quick look at the weekly chart for the NASDAQ just to put the, the week into perspective as well so you can see a clear undercut of that 10-week line. But as you mentioned, there are a couple of weeks there. Uh, we're looking pretty positive, but there are a lot of twists and turns in the market, and it's important uh, to stay on your toes. And that's actually the subject of a video that you and I are going to be doing tomorrow for <laughs> Barron's Live. Got to sneak that in there. Barron's.com slash live. Since the market is closed, we're not going to have IEB Live or the Stock Market Today video, but don't you worry. We're going to fill that void with a great educational lesson on uh, Barron's. So barons.com slash live for the details on that. We'll be talking about how you can uh, avoid getting flat footed with all of the twists and turns that the market presents. And Ed, I think it's also important for us to uh, check in on the 10 year treasury yield uh, because it's continuing to go sky high. Yeah. And yeah, you know, there's a couple of blips, sort of like the NASDAQ had a couple of blips higher, not coincidentally. Uh, here we have a, a couple of blips down, but the trend is unrelentingly higher, really. Uh, you know, it's barely touching the 10-day line anyway on here. It's just skyrocketed since, you know, since um, mid-late February. Really amazing on a weekly chart. It's now the highest since late 2018. It gets up about 3% there. You're starting to look at the highest levels in many, many years. Uh, again, we've obviously tolerated in the past, but if you really want to think about it, one reason why the market has had such a run for so many years, you know, the long secular trend has been the declining treasury yields and it's fallen, fallen, fallen. And yeah, there are times when it goes up, but that trend has been pretty far down. This is one reason, especially why growth stocks, uh, you know, there are such low, you know, such low rates made it easy for these high growth stocks to get big gains. Uh, you know, that that is definitely a headwind for the market, especially growth stocks. Right. And Ed, we talk about using technical analysis on all sorts of time frames down to, you know, the minute by minute, all the way to the monthly. Can technical traders look at some sort of trend line here and make any assumptions? Or can you not treat this in the same way that you can with individual stocks and the major indexes? I mean, you know, you, you can use technical analysis and that sometimes plays into it because you can sometimes you can see that there was sort of a breakout a few weeks, a few months ago. There was a sort of, you know, cup base, cup with handle, and it just shot out of there after hitting resistance. So, yeah, it might hit resistance here, but the Fed is going to be raising rates a lot. And it'll be interesting to see if inflation does peak out, if the economy starts slowing, maybe 
maybe yields start leveling off, but it's not clear where that'll be. Right now, you can just see right, you know, right now, you don't want to get in front of this. I mean, I wouldn't want to be, you know, I, this is an area that might hit resistance, but you don't know. It could just blow right past it as well. Right. Don't want to be making a, a big bet here, but <laughs> something to make note of, that, again, this uh, unrelenting surge, as you mentioned. Well, let's also add some color uh, by looking at some ETFs this week. So here's a look at the XME Metals and Mining ETF. So uh, a good week for metals and mining stocks. So let's take a look at the weekly. So for the week, this ETF up some 7.3%. So cyclicals really continuing their advance here. Let's also take a look at XLE energy uh up a little bit but again this is you know one of the hottest sectors this year so the fact that it is staying at highs also uh, we can take a look at uh, trends in uh you know oil itself this is a, a you know a rough proxy here the uso etf but it looks like uh, the price of oil up this week and so continuing to see strength in many oil and gas names yeah and these are the sectors i mean you want to be listening to the market this is definitely the where the market has been strong. Yeah, sometimes there's some other sectors. There's defense, there's medicals. But, you know, you want to look at the sectors that are working uh, if you're going to play this market at all. You know, you know, that's just the way it is. And, uh, yeah, these th these are the areas that, are, that have been doing well. You might want to be looking for pullbacks. I think you made a good point that buying off the 21-day line or off the 50-day line might be a safer bet because there are some ups and downs. They sort of have these little mini waves on their uptrends and so to be a little mm -hmm. safer you might want to do that rather than breakouts but it's definitely been the way to play this market yes so yeah just just keep that in mind uh because with a big advance we do like to see more of a pause it looks like pattern recognition is at least picking up some <laughs> sort of base here so you know maybe investors are thinking hey is this long enough of a pause to start buying into into strength but yeah, be careful with that because uh, the pullback seem like a, a pretty clear, more low risk entry in terms of uh, helping you make sure that you're, you're not getting shaken out. Uh, so all things to consider there. And speaking of groups that are working versus not working, let's take a look at chips. Here is the SMH ETF down about three and a half percent this week and now testing its lows from uh, mid-March. So it seems like that's at a, a pretty critical level. Yeah, I mean, as the chips were just looking so much better just about two and a half weeks ago, now NVIDIA, all these other names just completely crashing through, everything that was looking good in that sector down. And some of those weren't even that highly valued. I mean, we talk about these high PE stocks getting hit. Some of them weren't that bad. Uh, it is It is really, uh, this is really a disturbing trend for uh, if you're if you're looking for techs to do well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And then uh, let's also take a look at ARKK, a proxy for those highly valued growth names down about 2.8% here. So uh, a little run up a couple of weeks ago, along with that bottom fishing rally that uh, we've been talking about, but some resistance right around that declining 10 week. And this is a reason why, Ed, we don't focus on uh, those bottom fishing names, because as Mark Minervini was saying yesterday, hey, yeah, you could win the lottery, uh, but do you really like your odds there? And so this is this is showing that uh, the, the market uh, giveth quickly, but the market can also taketh away. Absolutely. Okay, and moving on, now let's take a look at some stocks here. The reopening play. So here's a look at Expedia Group in the leisure tra uh, travel booking area, up two and a quarter percent today. Looks like volume was uh, a below average, but higher than the prior couple of days, almost average volume. And the action that we're seeing here with Expedia, you know, it's not alone. We're seeing hotels moving, really this whole travel leisure theme starting to perk back up. Yeah. I mean, I know I don't take many vacations yet. I've been hammering the travel theme. Uh, <laughs> I've called so many rallies that haven't happened in the past few months. So, I mean, let's take that with a great Oh, hey, call. swing trade, swing trade rallies. Swing trade rallies. I mean, it's also, yeah. there's been, look, the right, look, and this is where the market headwinds have come in, Russia, fuel costs. Yeah. Uh, what happened here is that on Wednesday, Delta came out with earnings. The earnings were fine, but then their guidance was pretty good. And they also said, 
customers are not mining the higher fares. And we knew that from other things that fares have been skyrocketing. And so it's like, oh, people are going to travel. Maybe people are shifting away from consumer goods to travel. We will see. Uh, there was a lot of these names coming up. Yeah, there's a buy point here with a couple of handle buy point. You could probably do a downward sloping trend line from the top of this sort of somewhat V-shaped base. It is it is violent. So that would provide a slightly lower entry. It'd be sort of sort of coincide with some trading all along the left hand side. There's sort of a lot of that trading that's been going on. There. Yeah, a little action there. It's a little bit like getting on a ship. It's a little choppy seas. I will say this is not the prettiest chart. Uh, there are issues with it, um, but then you can look at a couple things. One, the P.E. ratio is extremely high, but that's a backward P.E. And I will say the growth is supposed to more than quadruple this year. So that will make the growth, the P.E. ratio look a little better. Uh, yeah, there mm -hmm. are definitely others out there. We, you know, I know that, uh, you, you know, you and Justin talked about Marriott yesterday. Uh, you know, that came up, some of the other names. Uh, so there's definitely some others, but... Expedia is part of that. Um, it, it's uh, one of the stronger growing ones. But yeah, there's there's issues with it. If you want to do it, I would think a trend line entry would be the way to go, at least, and, and maybe not take a big bet. Uh, so, right. and, you know, it also, one advantage of the travel names is that it's not following suit with the energy names. I, you know, if you don't want to get right. everything going in one direction, if you buy two steel stocks, two energy stocks, and a miner, yeah, there's a good chance they'll all rise and fall in the same way, and you can right. be more ex more concentrated than you realize. So this one's a little bit of counter counter to that. Yeah, great points there. And as we were talking a little earlier in the show about uh, using early entries with the fits and starts that we've seen, making sure that you're not buying too extended is is a great idea because breakouts at this point almost feel extended in a lot of uh, ways. So keep a tight leash take uh, some profits quickly as well finance that trade and uh yeah look right around that 50 day or 10 week line uh as your as your line in the sand in a lot of cases so something to keep in mind with that let's take a look at chenier energy lng uh pull back to its 21 day line it's had a couple of those in this run and it's been a successful area of support for the stock in this move in 2022 yeah, it, it's found support of the 21-day line. And I guess if you go to a weekly, it also found support around the 10-week line. Now, this is either the second or the third pullback. It's sort of hard to say because that first pullback was sort of around. It hadn't really fully broken out. So I don't know if you count that. Right. So, But still, it's getting to the point where it's a little less, you know, it's not as good sign, but still it's something. If you know, it's like, you know, it, it's, there's higher risk the more pullbacks you have. But there is a, it has traded relatively tightly. It's founding support of the 21-day line. This might be an area where you could try to enter or add on a few shares, uh, you know, because it's not too far from the 10 week line. Maybe this one mm -hmm. forms a base. You know, uh, it's um, you know, the sector hasn't really been stable enough. It's been moving too much to do that. But maybe in a, in a week or two, we could form a base. So this one look a lot of growth area on this one. Uh, and it seems like LNG is going to be in high demand for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, the stock right about 4% above the 10 week line. So as you mentioned, not uh, too extended by that measure. And this relative strength line, uh, pretty steep in a good way. We like to see that outperformance. So uh, some compelling action here, no doubt. And now let's also take a look at Checkpoint Software. Oh, software technology. But it seems like the security software group is, uh, you know, bucking the overall downtrend and weakness that we're seeing in tech. This is the one area that is holding up. Yeah. And again, we saw chips were looking good a few weeks ago and then they fell apart. So it's it's always possible this sector does as well. But this is one been a leader. It broke out and depending on where it is on a daily, it's either sort of a base on base from a weekly. It's maybe a little bit too far from a daily, but you know, it's long consolidations. It had a strong run up and now has formed another base. Uh, it depends on how you look at it, depending on like a weekly chart has it as a flat base. The daily has it as a cup base. Um, there is on a daily on a, on a daily chart. There will be in an hour or two. It'll have. Well, I'm not sure if it'll show right away. Maybe wait until after Friday because it's a short week. So I'm not sure when it'll show. <laughs> but that is a handle there because that is five days. So, you, you know, there is a handle there. It wouldn't be terrible if it came down and undercut the 21 day, got more of a shakeout. But, you know, it's it's forming a nice action here, trading a little bit tighter lately. 
uh, as you say, this is an area of strength and the PE ratio is actually really low. I mean, the growth isn't great, but low growth, low PE stocks are in a heck of a lot, doing a heck of a lot better than the, than the mm -hmm. fast growth, high PE stocks. That's just, that's just the way it is right now. Right. Exactly. And yep, it's not acting alone. The, the group is 43 out of 197. So that definitely tells you something has been improving in the, in the group ranks and Palo Alto, a name in the group that we've been uh, talking about uh, quite a bit. So thanks for pointing out this setup for us, Ed. And uh, now let's talk about what investors should be thinking about in the week ahead. What should they be doing over the weekend to prepare their portfolios for another week of battle? I mean, we are now in earnings season, so that's pretty yeah. important. That adds a lot of risk to things. There's a lot of stocks that'll be coming out. You definitely want to look not just on the holdings that you have, but especially in the first couple of weeks when we don't have any idea how they're going to come out. You want to, you know, just how we saw how all the travel stocks rose on Delta. So when it's the first big company to report in a sector that really matters. So definitely be paying attention, not just to your holdings, but to what, you know, the, maybe the rivals or customers or suppliers. So you know that you may want to take some profits, you know, ahead of that, depending, is there enough cushion? And, you know, just make sure you're just trying to stay in sync with this market. It's not a market to be going full bore in. It's, if you're going to be in this market, keep your exposure light, keep it mm -hmm. in the sector that, is, that are working. Don't be too concentrated in a particular area. You know, I just stay humble, stay flexible. Don't get flat footed. Uh, definitely be on your toes. Uh, you know, it's definitely a market that uh, you don't want to be sleeping on. You want to be paying paying close attention to. Exactly. Well, thanks for the great words of wisdom there, Ed. And yes, once again, we will see you tomorrow at noon Eastern, Barron's Live, uh, about how you can avoid getting flat-footed in the market. Sign up at uh, barrons.com slash live. And Coming up here in uh, a little bit, five o'clock Eastern, I will be having some stock tales with Joe Fami. So it'll be a fun conversation from the always insightful <laughs> investing expert that Joe Fami is. And that'll be live on my YouTube channel. So I either pop on over there or on Twitter to find the, the link. I'm at Alyssa Corum, and we're looking uh, forward to a fun conversation with Joe coming up here in a little bit. So I will see everyone there. And then, Ed, I'll see you tomorrow over on, uh, on Barron's Live. We'll see you all there, everyone. Thanks so much for watching.